Okay, and we're back. Hour number three. It is a Monday, and that means it's time to spend a little time with Yochi Shimatsu and Dana Dernford, who is our special guest tonight. Yochi, are you there? How's our connection this week? Uh, it's okay. Not great. Not great, but okay. Uh, fair to middling. Yeah. Uh, say, you know, no, there's it's been a uh, lot of electromagnetic disturbances yeah. over the Pacific, so. It's actually pretty, it's yeah, actually not pretty. Longer lying. I think it's like the last. Well, right now it's pretty good. No problem. Yeah, well, maybe on your side. Yeah, not so good. Anyway, yeah, we've, uh, we're there. We're, we're still struggling it out. We just saw this, uh, summit in China at the APEC meeting between ah, Shinzo the Abe, big... the Japanese pro-nuclear prime minister. Yeah. And prime, uh, and President Xi Jinping of China. And you saw the expression on Xi Jinping's face like he's, you know, touching the hand of Jabba the Hutt or something, you know, slimy. Yeah, you know, I mean, the guy's a big guy, but he just so so. That's this funny. Taste, this taste and disgust, and do I really have to do this? Can I step down for the presidency for this one? You know, can someone else take over this flying bag? Very funny. And I think you know, you know, Beijing was hit a lot by a lot of the backwash out of Fukushima back in March 2011. And, uh, yeah, I, I've been working in the environment, you know, in China at this time, and uh, all the vegetables in that area were destroyed, you know, because of the radiation. You know, they, they monitor radiation, and they don't talk a lot about where they do it and wipe you it out. Don't, we don't, don't one green vegetable from the far desert. Hmm. So they're, they're quite aware of uh, what's happened there. Fukushima has been very critical. They understand what's happening in the Pacific. Uh, they fish a lot off the shores of Japan, so... And then the war, you know, the fact that Shinzo Abe is an advocate of nuclear uh, bombs, you know, nuclear warheads. Oh, he loves it. It doesn't make him too much happy. Imagine if, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the, 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 the people, the pro-nuclear people in Japan talk a lot of stuff against China, but imagine, you know, because they fought the same war against the United States. Imagine if you have a Japanese prime minister like Shinzo Abe, who actually thinks this stuff, who says that Pearl Harbor... The guys who bombed Pearl Harbor in the battleship Arizona were great heroes, you know? And we we should worship these guys and follow their spirit and do it again if we have to. That There was no such thing as a death march in Bataan. You know, we never hurt uh, any prisoners. No, none of never that. happened. That's no. all lies. That's propaganda. No secret bio-war I mean, yeah, germ happened. factory, nothing. No, no, of that. Yeah, and then we did the right thing at Guadalcanal, you know, holding back these awful, evil barbarians. You know, That's from right. The rest who, you know, <laughs> trying to impose evil things like democracy on Japan. I mean, imagine if that, that would be a massive outcry in America and a demand to investigate the nuclear power industry in Japan, make sure that Japan is not getting up warheads for another second attempt, you know, another. So... So yeah. you can see the Chinese are a lot closer. Why they 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 go? You know they just go and you know, start raising mad against Japan when uh, this guy talks like this. You know they lost what twenty million people in World War Two. You know so uh-huh. you, you got to understand why the Chinese prime uh, president has this really feeling of you know distaste in in touching this guy who you know who is totally. Uh, you know, un- not just unapologetic, but is a, is a raving maniac of a warmonger who wants to do this again, but this time with nuclear bombs and uh, other kinds of weapons. What's a, what's really amazing to me? That's the problem at... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you, go ahead. Yes? No, I'm listening. I'm listening to what's amazing. Go ahead. I'm mean, listening to you, yeah? What really amazes me, say? yeah, is that here is uh, Shinzo Abe... A nuclear nut, if there ever was yeah. one, completely avoiding talking about it. We've had a virtual news blackout from Japan on Fukushima, as you well know. The lid came down. We're not getting crap Absolutely. anymore. ENE News puts up sometimes one story every three days. You just put up four or five a day. Gone. Gone. We're finding good stories occasionally. Now, yeah. here's one. And we're going to talk to Dana about this in a couple of minutes. Yeah. This is from a scientist in yeah. California, uh, Jamie Yankee, or Yankee. Yeah. Uh, there's a quote here. This is November 2nd. The krill that is, this is like a small shrimp. The krill 
that is usually present right. has disappeared. And the fish that some of these birds rely on have disappeared. Up until July, we had an abundance of whales around the Farallon Islands, mostly humpbacks and some blue whales. Yeah. And when we went back in September, uh -huh. two months later, there were no krill and the whales were nearly absent. And then there's another wow. story. Yeah, the kill off continues. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. well uh -huh. so we have now uh, literally strong scientific evidence that not one baby whale born on the West Coast or down in Baja and swimming up the West Coast has made it past the, the age of one year since 311. They're all dying. They're all true, going. True, true. We saw, we saw uh, juvenile whales, but no babies, you know, when I was out there. That's California. right. There That's were juveniles right. out there. But there were no babies. You know, no babies, and they're coming up from Ba. So, you know, they're there. You know, they're breeding. I mean, you know, but I mean, that's where they're the breeding ground, and we're not seeing any babies. And, and certainly, uh, you know, sterility seems to be a real problem. You know, the conception eggs, ovum are very, of uh, the females are very, very delicate, as we know in humans. You know, these poor girls in Fukushima and, uh, and around Fukushima have been exposed. You know, um, terrible thing in the stories we've heard about visitors, tourists. They're only a week in Japan. Right. Coming back having terrible miscarriages yeah, or being told right. by their doctors not yeah. to have babies. I mean, women, yeah. the, you know, the eggs in, in the female are very, very sensitive, have no real protection. No. Really soft tissue yeah. there, you know? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. a terrible situation. Yeah, I mean, this is the, we, we are, fa we're, around, we may be this facing guy completely an apologetic. Yeah. He mm. doesn't care. I, that was my point. He's a psychopath. Here's another one. The executive director. Right, I mean, yeah, I mean, I talk about Pearl Harbor or something, but you know, essentially, there's something in some ways worse than Pearl Harbor going on. You know, whole biological wipeout. Oh, I, are you kidding? A much more heavy Only effect on American lives than World War II did. You know, it's going to have it'll be devastating. I to, could not uh, agree you know, more. United I, States, Canada. You're, you're right. You're totally Austin, right. New Mexico. I mean, Way worse. A devastating blow. Pearl Harbor was a picnic. Yeah. Pearl Harbor, you know how many Americans died at Pearl Harbor? Very few people do. Only 2,600. Now that's all, that's uh, not, yeah. that's nothing. Okay, yeah. Nothing. 20, we lost 2,700, yeah. 2,800 on, on, now, on 311. And we don't even, and we have no idea. You know, the whole point is the, uh, the, uh, she knew a lot of the Prime Minister's office and scientific advice that so far not one single person yet has died. From the Fukushima disaster, I'm sorry. I treated elderly people there who are gone now. You know, you know they were on the brink of going game herbs, kept them going for two years. Yeah. They're gone now. You yeah. know, I mean, people have died. You know, no one dies directly of radiation. I mean, you die from the blast. You die from exposure. You die from cancer. You die from leukemia or heart attack. Of course, nobody died directly. So they they still wheel out this stuff. And in such bad faith that we know a lot of those poor workers uh, obviously have died, but, you know, they recruited them in places where we can't get information from, you know, under contracts with gangsters and make sure no information gets. Nothing's out. coming out. No information's man, coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Here's man it. is really insidious. You know, it's... it's oh, that's a perfect word. Insidious fellow. No, no. This is this is. Yeah, he's got to go. He's we, we, go. Yeah. He's, he's not going to go. I kind of regret that uh, the Chinese shook his hand. I mean, they should have, they should have, uh, you know, they should have snubbed him, know, dumped him in Manchuria somewhere at the old war site to take a look at what yeah. your grandfather did. Now, you know, look at the mass graves out here. You know, look at the bodies we dug up. Your grandfather plowed under. That's what they should have done. You know, I thought this guy give him a real breath. Of, you know, taste of his own medicine. I couldn't anyway, agree more. Here's it's here's a, a big year, 2015, and dealing with this guy because I think a lot of people in Japan are completely fed up. You know, the economy is tanked. Taxes are going to go up again. Uh, people are in their last. You know, I mean, they, it's either fight or die. You know, I mean, they're at a point now. You know, they they've lived on hope so far. And I tell you, there is no more hope. People have got to stand up now. You know, and do what they've got to do. Here's another quote. It's, this is from Zeke yeah. Grader, G-R-A-D-E-R. -E He's the executive director of the Pacific Federation of Fishermen's Associations in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. He said, 
our guys down in Santa Barbara are saying there's almost nothing down there. Just a lot of warm, clear water. A little bit of salmon and not much else. It's over. Interesting, Santa Barbara. Yeah, we talked about that Santa Barbara. That's where the uh, the shelf sort of bulges out there, like you know, that's the right. Island. That's and right. That uh, theoretically be, should be a somewhat cleaner area, but you know, it's the, the amount that's flowing through now is so so steady. And uh, it's so it's dense, it still gets everything. in. So it doesn't. Again, the, yeah, you'd think it'd hang outside the Channel Islands, but it doesn't. It ducks in. Depends on the storms. Depends on the wind. Stuff can be pushed right yeah. on shore, uh, and then head on down south. It, hey. Exactly. Exactly. So we're yeah, getting that's that. That's what Dana's been talking about. You yeah. know that are there are certain days when the stuff just blows in, and nothing is going to stop it. The Pacific winds and tides are powerful force. The waves are a powerful force. And that drives the radiation from the surface right across, you know. And even though wave sort of goes up and down, you know the wind does push a lot of the surface water forward before it. So oh, hell yes. I'm afraid that's what's happening to California. Yeah. And no one's talking now in California, you know. So, uh, the, the state government has sort of gone just silent. It's not talking about any drought, any weather issues. It's just, you know, they're, they're just gone mom. And it's a sign of bad You got it. They know terrible things are happening. You got it. They can't even spin it now. There's no more spin left. Yeah, no. Nope. There's no more spin. There's nothing else nope. to say. You can't blame it on anything else. So if you don't say it, it doesn't yeah, exist. Yeah, terrible situation. Yeah. Here's, uh, let's get... The now gone. This last typhoon, this last yeah. massive typhoon, it missed the mainland of Japan, went straight up the Pacific Trench. It did hit Fukushima. The only place in Japan... That that storm hit was Pretty Fukushima. Ironic. It was yeah. going right on, dead on into Fukushima. Yeah, and then it goes past Fukushima into the Bering Strait, which means there's more radiation now going into the Arctic again. This is radioactive, you know. Uh, well, it's uh, picking up more, more, yeah, it, more evaporation. Uh, uh, picking up off, off Fukushima, right off the yeah. trench, driving it into. Alaska and uh, Siberia and into the Arctic. There, this is like the last. This is the final blow for the Arctic. I think. The Arctic well, it could well be. And now we got this. It's uh, going to be gone for good after this one. The polar vortex is uh, about to step down all through the middle U.S. Minus nine in Montana, they're predicting, and it'll hit all the way down into the uh, the yeah. mid-eastern seaboard, the Carolinas. Uh, very cold weather. Here, let's go and uh, bring uh, Dana well, in and see point. how. Yeah, let's bring Dana in and see how he's doing up there. You yeah, there, yeah. Uh, yeah. my friend Dana? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. I am. Yeah, hi, Yoshi. He said, he said, hi, Yochi. Okay, Yochi is there. Hey, Dana, how are you doing? Uh, you're still hanging in there. So happy. So glad you're hanging in. Oh, yes. No, we're... Take, we took two weeks off. It was just chaos all around us. So I'm redoing everything on the boat. We're going back out and do a few local areas before we head off again. No, nope, still heading off. Going to have another kick at the north coast. Not getting off that easy. I'm going to go up and try to strip off that before I'm finished. What uh, what's going on with this uh, this typhoon that is moving in through the yeah. the I guess the Gulf of Alaska and then on up? Well, have you have you seen it? Are you observing it? Right, it's come to uh, we keep getting uh, you know like four days of straight weather. That was the typhoon coming through. We got two day break, but now apparently it's going to be really rough for another week, week and a half, which is okay because we took that time off, I guess, but. Just before we left, we seen that stuff was coming in, and the radiation detector was all the way up into the 230s and 240s uh, counts per minute. And you were getting you were getting 230 and 240 in advance of the typhoon. And with the typhoon. Uh, with it. Say about two days after the typhoon showed up, actually. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, wow. we got hammered with big numbers. Yeah. And so I would I would imagine that was obviously getting picked up and liberated. Of course, these particles, a lot of people don't get it, but the particles coming out of Fukushima, folks, think about the stuff that comes from the forest fire and contributes to your uh, index for your smog. It comes across the Pacific uh-huh. in about three or four days from Asia countries. And the forest fire particles are way bigger than the stuff in Fukushima, a oh, thousand yeah. times bigger. And so, like you know, Jeff, 
that stuff don't even need to go into the jet stream to get across. It, it comes across with the wind, and it's not salutable. A lot of that stuff is not salutable, particularly the salt water that's coming back, washing back in on that site and coming in contact with those rods and those coriums. Those coriums are long, long gone, and they're, they're off doing their own thing. There is a bunch of it, no doubt, splattered on the inside and everything, Oh, yeah. But the, the direct effect on this coastline has been devastation. Once again, I'll just remind everybody really quickly was that out of 6,500 species of invertebrates on our coastline in British Columbia, recognized by Simon Fraser University and University of Victoria, I never found none. These are the ones that uh, look kind of like shrimp, but there's 6,500 species. Mm-hmm. Out of 480 species of worms indigenous to this coastline in British Columbia, recognized by our institution, I found none. To me, that alone is unimaginably frightening 68 species of sterifish we only found around five species none of them plentiful all the welts we never found any football fields of sea cucumbers or whelks or mm-hmm. limpets or snails a total evisceration we don't even find their carcasses we don't even find the shells we find that it's all literally wiped out and only a handful of species clinging on in other words if and this is true folks if the the joint uh, barnacles disappear, if the blue mussel disappear, if the kelp weed disappear, and the kelp cabbage disappear, and of the 400 species of algae, they are the two dominant ones. The rest of them, I've only counted 24 species altogether of algae. Uh-huh. But if those four disappear, there's nothing left on the coastline. It'll be naked. Uh, and that's common because Fukushima hasn't stopped. And nobody's trying to stop it. And the homeless don't know what they're doing. They're running around doing whatever's yelled at them, they're yeah. abused, they shouldn't right. be there in the first place, they don't even show their ID to get into these places. It's shocking, Jeff, as you covered over and over and over, that our, the whole ecological system, our whole oxygen, not our whole oxygen, but the biggest portion of our oxygen is coming into that ocean. And as we kill off that phytoplankton, of course, the krill had to go. And all the pods were gone. And there's nothing left for the migratory animals as the birds and that come along the coastline to eat up in the mud flats because these these invertebrates and these larvae and all this uh, soup of life that is the life has been there for millions of years through genetic superior selection. Millions it's of years. Missing. The food yeah, chain has been years, sh- right. the food chain has been shattered. Period. Yes. And when they they look at, I mean, this report from Santa Barbara, that's my home. They're saying there's nothing, almost nothing down there, just a lot of warm, clear water. A little bit of salmon and not much else. There used to be so much fish in the Santa Barbara Channel. It was incredible. And it's gone. No one wants to listen to it. They don't want to hear about it. The realtors don't want to hear about it. The business people don't want to hear about it. Those who have their palatial estates certainly don't want to hear about it. But they're not seeing any baby whales, folks. One year old, that's as long as they make it, and they die. You remember the story about the orcas and the scientists who watched them say they have been acting very strangely, lethargic, they're not healthy, they don't look good. So they're, they're, it's, it's all happening. You know they stopped singing here, right? That's on. No! But they have stopped singing, yeah. Oh, that's no. British Columbia. And that well, was a study out of the institution in Puget Sound. That's a fact, folks. They stopped singing. And so did, there you go. What, what could do something like that? Did Talk you hear that, uh, Yochi? The orcas have stopped singing. That's a fact. If you look it up, you'll find it. Um, like, there was a radioactive whale caught 650 kilometers from Fukushima. Did you get that, Yochi? I think we lost him again. There's a baby humpback whale found dead. No, I, I'm okay. here. It's just I got oh. some bad reception. Sorry, uh, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, reception's a little bad. So I couldn't well, what, get, what, uh, uh, your question. What Dana, yeah. ju- what Dana just said was that the orcas mm-hmm. have stopped singing. Yeah. Have what? Have Sto- stopped? They've stopped singing. They're no longer I'm making from orca from noises. British Columbia. In BC. They don't make noises. They're silent. Oh boy, yeah, that's interesting, huh? That's I would very strange, driving and hear them singing all the time. It's just something you got used to. The entire coastline 
It's full of you, you can you can actually you can, you can hear them. Well, I'll you can hear them. Yeah, no, they're, 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 that's their echo location, and uh, you can hear them probably from a few miles away. I would imagine. But it's hard to say because you don't see them, but you can definitely hear them. It, it's impossible not to hear them. Uh-huh. Uh, the ocean, of course, magnifies the noises by about five or six times at least. Well, that's how whales can so, communicate over such long distances. Right. The, the water is an amazing communicator. Yeah, of they're acoustic incredible, sound. incredible phenomena, you know. Yeah, just one of these, again, these effects of Fukushima that are so unexpected, you know, where then one thing after the other we found out that no one can predict, and it's happening. Yeah? That's right. Terrible. There's a massive dead creature, whale rather, uh, found in Tokyo back in January 10, 2012. It was near where they dumped the radioactive ash into the ocean. Was that the blue whale, Dana? Was that the blue whale? I think, uh, I'm not sure actually what kind of whale. Well, there was a blue whale that Yochi mentioned that went into Tokyo Bay and and died. Right. Yeah, that was probably the same one. Mm -hmm. That was 2012, January. Uh Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, but they, you know, they're dumping all this radioactive material. They're burning it in the incinerators and they're dumping the ash in the ocean. But the incinerators, that stuff there is smaller than the forest fire particles. And so that will come over within three or four days. Well, let so, me tell you something else to, let, let me tag, else. that's okay. No problem. We have to take a break here, but I want to tag this real quick with what you've been saying. Not only the forest fires from Asia come across the Pacific, the embers and the little pieces of ash and particulates. But if you remember years ago, there would be big sandstorms that would come all the way across the Pacific, and you could see the sandstorms. You could see the discoloration from it. So it's not hard to imagine that here's Japan with dozens of these major municipal incinerators burning radioactive waste, putting it in the air, and it comes right across the ocean in the low-level, normal, atmospheric movements. doesn't have to reach the jet stream. Sickening. Hold on, we'll come right back with more in just a couple. Okay, and welcome back. Talking with... Dana Dernford and Yochi, of course, as we do each Monday. Uh, Yochi, any questions for Dana in particular you want to ask? Well, I mean, I mean this storm is just ripping through it. So I'm just kind of wondering what happens afterwards. What, what's the uh, plan now? Does it continue on? Or it's also getting kind of cold up there. We're talking about, uh, you know, subarctic temperatures up there. Uh, rough seas, you know, uh, I think that show, you know, on Discovery Channel called, the, what's it called? The fishing boat shows, you know, about the uh, crab fishermen and fishermen up there in the Arctic. Well, pretty well, crazy, crazy up there. So I'm wondering how, how he plans to continue, you know. Yeah, I'm going to go up the coastline. We got the cab on the boat. We just spent a lot of money on that, and that is going to keep us nice and dry and comfortable and warm. And we have to get it done because, you know, it's missing on the coastline. Everything is missing on this coastline. And so the urgency is real. There's no time to wait till spring, in my opinion. The time is to go up and get it over with mm-hmm. and document it and, and show the world truly 100% definitively, you know, in one way or another. And right now it's looking like the other because we ain't finding anything. And the ocean should recede itself. It didn't. And so the urgency... Urgency of this for me is unimaginable. It has to, I have to see with my own two eyes, I guess like everybody else, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got to go up and find it. Otherwise, what are you going to do? You're going to pretend that, it, you know, it was only one part of the coastline. Even now they're doing that. They're pretending it's just, just one part yeah. of the coastline. But if you like hey, I has, told before. Well, has, that, has, that, has anyone admitted anything about your first... Uh, hundred kilometer trip. Right. No, nobody admits nothing, and nobody, nobody comes out and challenges me on it. Nobody comes out and tries to debunk me on it. Unbelievable. So again, lone rangers like the, that are here, like we don't know who they are. But no, yeah. but no academics come out and saying, "Well, here, look, we went to the same tidal pools, and they know where I went. They can go there and debunk me anytime they want." That's right. Really easy to do, but they can't debunk me. 
uh, they can't go in there and take the pictures like we've done and show anything different because that's what the pictures are of those places, and we got lots of documentation of it. So that's quite frightening. Like Banfield, of course, we talked to the director of 70 different universities working at this research facility, and he made an outrageous, outrageous lie that white sea enemies don't attach to rocks. It was simple as looking at underwater pictures of Berkeley Sound to prove them wrong. And so why would he say something like that? It's because they're, they really truly do understand what's going on. They're just not going to tell us. They have no intentions of telling us, and they have every intention of keeping us on the coastline in the dark, in the danger, because this stuff is coming over from Japan in 131 days and whacking into our coastline, and there's right. 130 days of uh, plumes behind it, and that's never going to stop. And we're not even trying to stop Fukushima. And we have the ability to do it. We have the technology to do it. We have the want to do it. And if the world was to wake up and understand what's going on and treat it with the urgency like it was, deserve 100% as if it was a meteorite coming at us, then we could we could get some headway into the future. But on this path, there is no future. You, you know, you guys have talked about how the lack of oxygen will affect this population. Imagine, folks... Everybody going around drunk all the time because of lack of oxygen. That's all lack of oxygen. That's all drinking is, being drunk, is a lack of oxygen. You're displacing the oxygen molecules with alcohol molecules, and you get lethargic and drunk because of that. But your the intoxication is the lack of oxygen. And so that's what you can expect in the near future as, the, as we deplete the oxygen that's left on the planet because we're not producing it under any circumstances nowhere close to what we were before. We have annihilated the phytoplankton and, and all the other bases of the food chain and the oxygen chain and knocked it right out of the picture, and that's definitive. But, you know, there's no, we can't produce oxygen at a thin air. That's what the phytoplankton, for billions of years, like you were saying before, right. Jeff, about how the dust gets carried across the ocean, and Tefco, um you know, he's running the hospitals at Fukushima, and people really don't understand what's going on. And there's, a, like you say, a news blackout that you started to show off with. It's a you know, blackout. America, there's one in Japan, too. Yeah. yeah. You're not seeing nothing coming out of Japan. Well, they shut the lid. A hundred million people. They shut the lid on uh, Ebola here. The Associated Press even admitted it, that they were no longer going to report on Ebola suspected cases or quarantines or watches monitoring people, nothing. And a lot of people yeah. lined right up behind them. Government, the government runs the media, so they don't want any yeah. more Ebola, so they shut that down. And Fukushima doesn't exist. People don't understand yeah. about yeah. oxygen deficiency. What, yeah, exactly. They don't. You know, the cities, the inner exactly. cities Once now... they find out that... Uh, go, go ahead, Yochi. Yeah, Once they find out that Ebola can be transmitted through the air... After they've been saying for months that it cannot be transmitted through the air. Right. That's it. That's the end of the show. Full defense. Cut the information. Just like once we find out that Fukushima, as we said very early on, is not limited to a small part of Japan, but is affecting the whole world. Okay, the whole, especially the Northern Hemisphere. That's when they turned off the news on Fukushima, basically. Except for these memorial meetings. For the tsunami victims, and they don't say a lot about radiation anymore. No, of course not. As soon as they realize it's coming over to North America and Europe, there goes, there goes the news. Yeah, they're gone. When it becomes news, that's when they leave. Okay, they they leave. Okay, it's airborne, and everyone is supposed to go can possibly pick it up in a droplet in the air. That's when the news packs up and goes home. They don't want to hear anymore after that. You know, the direct risk. And uh, the security issues, you got to understand, over there in Iraq or Syria somewhere, where you can drop bombs on the security issues. Security issues never reach home, right? Your own no. backyard, your garden, your kids. They never reach there. It can't reach there because everyone is so safe where they're at. There's like a girl, uh, a daughter-in-law, a friend of mine, and I just took her to dinner here in Thailand, and she says, I live in Tokyo, and I can't think about... Fukushima or radiation. I just can't think about it, you know? Same thing. People just can't, can't take the time to think about it. Well, she will when she gets cancer. Um, 
She'll think about it. You know the oxygen content. Well, she, she's, moved, she's moved to Cal. She moved to California, which isn't going to be much better. So no, myself. Well, I think it'll it be, won't be much I, better for her there. As long you know, as so. she's as long as she's inland, she'll be okay. You live on the right on the marine layer. You don't want to do that. Yeah, not very far. Not very well. Not very far. Unfortunately, not very far. So the so the whole issue is here. Unless we do think about it, we're not going to come up with any solutions. I mean, personal ones to begin with, you know. Well, personal As solutions are the only lot, solutions. You push yourself. Personal solutions are the only and solutions. You talk about supplements and all that. That's just the beginning, you know. Uh, not to have deficiencies, they're going to open you up to attack, you know. Exactly right. All right, stand by. We have to take a break. It used to be that the oxygen content of our environment that we breathed and relied upon to remain above room temperature was around 30, 35 percent sometimes. This is going back. The oxygen content on a percentage basis in the average city now is 16 to 18 percent. That's it. Dana's point is very important. As the oxygen declines, the inner cities are going to get worse. People will literally, that may be part and parcel of the great American malaise. Because there's not enough oxygen. They're oxygen deficient, most people in cities. And it's getting worse. Hold on a second. We'll come right back, folks. And we're back. Dana Dernford up in British Columbia, our special guest tonight. And uh, Yochi and I continue every Monday night for you to bring you the latest on this Unfolding catastrophe, which is just getting going. Uh, Yochi, they're taking off, uh, more and more, t- taking yeah. a second panel off. I guess it's reactor one, that shroud building, uh, that they put over yeah. the wreck, the yeah, wreckage. It's, all, do, it's already off. Yeah, yeah, right. They took another piece it's off. Crazy. I mean, obviously, there's an enormous release into the air. This typhoon just passed through. A lot of that's going to get blown north or towards the North American coast or toward Alaska. Uh, very poorly timed because they should have waited till the typhoon season was over. It's a little bit colder, but with the particles. Well, maybe they wanted to get it out of there. Out. That's the problem. They, they, this is a ventilation. Basically, they're, they're <laughs> supposed to announce the ventilation, but they didn't. Right. They just said we're taking the lid off. And it is a major, a huge space in there, by the way. And, uh, it's been on for more than a year, or so it's, Quite a bit of build up there, and of the winds, the high winds there, strong winds are just going to blow this stuff up and out toward American coast. And you know, you've got to wonder uh, what's going on. You know, uh, there's a summit going on. Uh, you know, the president and his team can meet with Shinzo Abe and tell him we don't appreciate. Uh, Har- uh, I think Stephen Harper is there, Prime Minister of Canada. He's, and, a, uh, he's another. He's taking information. This guy. This kid, yeah, uh, Dana Dernford is picking up really, you know, serious information about what's happening to Canada's Pacific Coast. Mr. Abe, uh, do you mind stopping it somehow? Tell, at least telling us what's going on. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, this is a time. Did you, did you, uh, step up to the bat and if they, Yochi, did you hear what oh? Dana, did you hear what Dana said earlier, uh, when that weather system, the typhoon, had hit land, he was getting readings of 240 and 260 CPM. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, this stuff is coming right out of Fukushima. You know, we're talking, we're talking about the lid came off. It's blowing off the air, and, and it's, it's been blowing off for a long time around there. This thing came a- across the Bering Strait, but a lot of it washed over to where he is. You know, it's like a fan effect, right? This thing is whirling around. So that's uh, not even course. the most it's not the center it's not the center of this storm that he measured. Imagine what's hitting Alaska now. Imagine what's happening to polar bears, what's left of them, walruses and you know, uh you know, the the big mammals up there. Imagine what's happening to people in Alaska, Native Americans, you know, uh to the people who are, you know, uh, working on the oil rigs and uh, you know, uh, miners and things. This is this is just a disaster hitting these people. And well, that's wait, why I asked about Alaska. I wonder how yeah. close he is. But, remember, uh, we're not doing that. I wanted to get up to Alaska. You remember, but it's a hard, yeah. it's a hard, it's yeah. a long way to go there. It's not exactly the cheapest place in the world if you're not a, especially if you're not a resident of Alaska. It gets quite costly to get around fast distances. Well, the, I guess the the big point is this: I hope 
that there are people in the Midwest who are going to be nailed with this uh, this polar mm-hmm. vortex. I hope they do some uh, serious reading. Oh yeah, and they should come up with uh, with definite spikes. Well, definitely. I mean, it's not going to be immediately because this is a huge punch. The title was a punch that pushes the polar vortex down. Fukushima has been increasing the air pressure in the region. That's why it's been unusually cold out there in the Midwest. But in uh, several days, let's say in a week or so, five days, a lot of that radiation is going to be flowing down right across big cities like Chicago, you know, Louisville, uh, you know, uh, St. Louis and all. I hope people are measuring there because this thing is going to come down. But they have picked up again. And you got to remember the eye of the storm, that's not even the strongest point that they have That's the edge, you know, where it's blowing, blowing up, it's whirling off. That's right. going to hit the Arctic right. and bounce right back down to American Midwest. So, that's you right. know, this is a national crisis for uh, Canada and the United States. And, uh, I just don't know how much how much more it's going to take before you know the food chain is really so serious and effective where you're going to be running out things like chicken and all before you know it you know and cattle beef you know where they just have to silently just destroy the animals. Well, I, look, uh, what are they what are they going to do? How, uh, uh, Dana, how many people that you know are still eating anything out of the Pacific Ocean? Lots. <laughs> they really people. are. There's a lot of people don't know any better, and you, well, the people I talk to, there's quite a few have stopped eating it, but there's still a lot out there just they switch off, and you can't reach them. You just you just can't reach a lot of people. That's just the way it is because the media got them really sucked in with the banana routine and the potato chips and water and sunshine. They still so buy that. It's hard huh? to have a conversation. Yeah. Mm. The point that you were making earlier, though, about the winds bringing it across. You know, that's so important. And another point I want to add to that for everybody was that there's less oxygen and your body, you know, is dealing with it that way because of like being drunk. But you got to think about when you're ingesting the radio, and everybody did, then your body attacks that with white blood cells and displaces more oxygen. And so the autoimmune reflex in the body is displacing oxygen molecules with white mm-hmm. blood cells to come out and fight it. And so even less oxygen in the human body as you get weaker and sicker from the radiation. And so we got to come up with solutions, that's for sure. And I don't know what they are, but we definitely got to come up. We do got some good ideas, but like you say, you need the planet to, to move on this and get it back together. Because we're, you, you know what we're going to have to do? I predict people are going to have to begin to supplement the oxygen that they would normally get through breathing. And one of the ways they could do it is uh, the product that we have is called Oxy-C. It liberates oxygen from the magnesium peroxide that's in the capsules, vegetarian capsules. And you take two or three of those, and, and you, ten minutes later, you feel the difference. It's like putting gasoline in your tank. You get oxygen yeah. in your blood. Oxygen. Yeah, mm-hmm. good stuff. Yeah, liquid oxygen mm-hmm. and and. That type of oxygen really truly, you can saturate a lot more oxygen in liquids than you can That's right. Um, breathe it in normally. Or you can put an amazing amount, actually, I can't remember what the numbers are, but it's 700 times its volume when it uh, uncompresses. So it's an huh. amazing amount that you can put into a liquid. Uh huh. Okay. Sure. What, uh, what I, what, what I want to ask, uh, Dana, we got just three minutes left. When you talk to the fishermen up there, I would think that there are two camps. One is in complete animated and aggressive denial, and the others are pretty well on our side of the fence. That's it's, true. Yeah, no, it's true. There's a lot of uh, people out there that are, are looking at things themselves. You do uh, suspect the government is lying to them constantly, and particularly about the Fukushima radiation. Mm-hmm. And there is a lot of guys whose entire... History and future depends upon that folk going it every day. And, and I've been there and I understand it. And I watched the industry collapse on the East Coast. I used to have 30,000 hooks and 120 gill nets and all the gear. Uh, and so you go to this denial stage where, but with us it's different where fisheries shut everything down for the international fleets. It's a different story. But I see that again now, that denial. Yes, absolutely. But you are not seeing 
uh, like a lot of product coming in. Uh, the sardines crashed here last year, right? And that really affected a whole lot of industries. They had a hearing scare here where all the hearing that were taken for samples were all bleeding from all their orifices and their fins and everything else, their eyeballs, and they were yellow on the inside. We had all kinds of crashes of uh, salmon on this coastline. It's uh -huh. been a really bad year. All the promises never came true again. And you know all these. Jeff, you covered them over and over and over. And just that we're seeing now the total annihilation of the, the nursery of the ocean itself is what we cover, the tidal pools and anything else we can see, but the tidal pools will be focused on right? and we'll continue to focus on and push ourselves into the communities now with more vigor and more authority and more righteousness because there's no time for games, no time for fooling around, no time for playing around anymore. Just go out and talk to those who listen, those who want to hear, and those who want to know the narrative, and keep going along and trying to, trying to build up a little resistance to come out as educated enough to understand the lies, at least that much. And that, that'll take the wind of it or say, oh, but outside of that, we need major support. You know, that's what we really need. I need to be able to raise enough to live stream it when you're on the ocean, on the beach itself, and decent quality. I don't know if that's possible, but that's, that's the theory, because I think that one could wake up the planet. They can't deny it when you're out there day and day after day for like a half an hour, an hour. That would be the ultimate thing to have happen. I, I think so. It's either that, or i got to block off a highway that's really busy yeah. during rush hour, and i got to get up on the roof and yell shit, and hopefully somebody puts me out there, and the media jumps on it, and the story starts from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Yoshi made a good point, and that's simple. The grazing animals who are eating the grasses that are growing in the soils that are getting rained upon are going to obviously show accumulations. Now, they don't live very long. They take them to slaughter relatively quickly. So that if they were like six, eight years, they would show a lot more accumulation. But they're younger animals, so they kind of get away with it. It's a minimal level. And, of course, our government here, our government, whatever the hell it is, raise the so-called safe limits of exposure to such astronomical heights now that they can hide behind these new fictional figures until the cows come home, no pun intended. Yeah. No. That's exactly what they're doing, Jeff. Yeah. They, they just keep raising it really across the All right. Yochi, uh, thank you. We're out of time again. Talk to you next week. Uh, enjoy Thailand. Be well. Right. Be safe. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good night, Dana. You too. You're welcome. All right. Okay, that's our program tonight. Uh, we got the latest from the greatest. There they are. All right, we'll be back with you tomorrow night, Tuesday, the 10th. The 10th? I'm talking about it. It's the 11th already. Today's the 10th. Amazing. Okay, talk to you tomorrow night. Take care. Thank you.